As the saying goes, art should comfort the disturbed and disturb the comfortable. To those afflicted with pain, confusion, and or grief, art gives those who are disturbed a sense of reassurance that they are not alone in whatever they are suffering from. It provides a voice for those who find it difficult to speak for themselves. However, to those who choose to surround themselves within the privileged luxuries of safety and comfort, some artwork may come across as deeply unsettling. And yet, a portion of people feel strongly attracted to this feeling of uneasiness and fear. It's one of the main reasons why horror movies are so popular. Perhaps this attraction is caused by the thrill of experiencing something frightful while knowing that, in the end, there will always be a conclusion. However, true horrors lie not within ghosts and monsters, but in life itself. There's nothing more disturbing than experiencing the terrors of reality, a place without a conclusive ending that nobody can truly escape from. A place where every day people have to come face to face with one of the most terrifying creatures known to mankind, themselves. The 20th century oil on canvas painting known as Figure with Meat brilliantly depicts the kind of horror and entrapment one might experience while living in the world without meaning. Created by Francis Bacon in 1954, this painting perfectly embodies the feeling of dread and uncertainty for humanity that was so prevalent after the end of World War II. This work is part of a series based on Diego Velazquez's 1650 portrait of Pope Innocent X. Here he transformed the Spanish Baroque artist's iconic portrayal of papal authority into a nightmarish image in which the blurred figure of the Pope, seen as if through a veil, seems trapped in a glass box torture chamber, his mouth open in a silent scream. In addition, the raw animal carcasses hanging above the figure are reminiscent of the works of 17th century Dutch artist Rembrandt van Rijn and 20th century Russian artist Shaim Sutin, both known for their bone-chillingly haunting images of raw meat. As the two cleaved sides of the slaughtered carcass point inwardly towards the subject of the painting, the Pope appears less like a religious figure and more like an untamed beast trapped inside a cage. The black empty void in the background feels as if it's sucking the viewer into the canvas, forcing them closer towards this horrifying creature. In order to further try to decipher the meaning behind this terrifyingly morbid piece, it is important to analyze the life and mindset of the talented artist who created it. Born on October 28, 1909, to a Protestant English family in Dublin, Ireland, Francis Bacon was named after his ancestor, a famous philosopher and statesman during the time of the Renaissance. Growing up, Bacon suffered from severe asthma, which forced him to be educated at home. He had an abusive relationship with his war veteran father, who strongly disapproved of Bacon's desire to wear feminine clothing. As a form of punishment for his behavior, his father had him harshly whipped by stable boys. This experience contributed to Bacon's emerging homosexuality and strong interest in masochism. At the age of 17, he was kicked out of his home and forced to live on his own. With a very small amount of allowance money to support himself, Bacon traveled from London and Paris to Berlin, where he often frequented gay nightclubs. Despite his father's hopes, the change of scenery only freed Bacon to further explore his sexual identity. His time in Berlin proved particularly important in this regard and was later remembered by him as one of emotional awakening. While in Paris, he became strongly fascinated in the art movements known as Cubism and Surrealism, which both inspired him to pursue a career in painting. His work, which primarily consisted of themes of violence, human isolation, and emotional agony, were based on his personal life experiences. These themes can be seen in Bacon's Figure with Me, in which it conveys a feeling of pain and alienation to the viewer. The figure which is modeled after a father of the Catholic Church, could represent Bacon's feelings based on his own father he had growing up. The meat hanging above appears to be pushing the figure downwards, making him feel vulnerable and in great distress. He screams in great agony, and yet nobody is there to help him out. 
Another piece of art expressing a feeling of detachment and isolation is that of Edvard Munch's famous and fittingly named painting, The Scream, created in 1893. Regarded to many as one of the most iconic paintings in art history, The Scream is best known for its symbolic representation of human anxiety and inspiring the birth of Expressionism in the early 20th century. From the bright red and orange that conflict against the black and blue colors to the flowing brushstrokes of the water that lead down towards a terrified ghost-like depiction of a human being, the painting is deeply unsettling and feels creepier the longer it is stared at. In addition to representing fear and uncertainty, the scream also symbolizes the troubles Monk faced while dealing with personal trauma and mental illness. According to him, the inspiration for this piece came from a moment of existential crisis he experienced while walking down a road one day. One evening, I was walking along a path. The city was on one side and the fjord below. I felt tired and ill. I stopped and looked out over the fjord. The sun was setting and the clouds turning blood red. I sensed a scream passing through nature. It seemed to me that I heard the scream. I painted this picture painting the clouds as actual blood. The color shrieked. This became the scream. Rather than focusing on realism to capture this moment in time, Monk chose to distort the people and the environment of the piece to further express his emotions onto the canvas. Similar to that of Francis Bacon, Edvard Monk's works were heavily influenced by his troubled childhood and personal life. Monk was born on December 12, 1863, in Norway, and was the second of five children. Growing up, he experienced a lot of death and illnesses within his family. Just five years after his birth, Monk's mother passed away due to tuberculosis. His eldest sister, Sophie, also suffered the same illness and died in 1877. In addition, his brother and father also died at a young age. According to Monk himself, it was clear to him death in his life was inescapable. Illness, insanity, and death were the black angels that kept watch over my cradle and accompanied me all my life. Although he was untrained formally, Monk took an interest in drawing at a very young age. After taking a trip to Paris in 1889, he was exposed to and inspired by the work of French Impressionist and Post-Impressionist painters. Frequent in his work were themes of isolation and loneliness. This is visually present in the scream, as the main subject of the piece appears to be having an intense panic attack while out in public. Despite screaming in fear, the two faceless figures in the background seem to be motionless and unwilling to help the individual. There are quite a bit of similarities between Bacon and Monk's work when comparing these paintings together. Both are brilliant representations of the horrors caused by alienation and entrapment. While it's visually obvious that Bacon's Pope is trapped within a glass barrier, the central subject in the scream is shown to be trapped within their own mind. The two figures standing in the back, who appear to be reluctant in approaching them, are just as useless and unhelpful to the subject as the two carcasses hanging above the screaming Pope. Whereas Monk's brushstrokes are flowing across his canvas to create a subtle feeling of unease, Bacon's strokes appear much more aggressive and torturous. Both these paintings, which display people in great pain and distress, are offered no satisfying resolution. Will the Pope escape the cage that he's trapped in? What happens after the events of the scream? Similar to life in the real world, there is no clear answer to everything. To live in a world without meaning is a horrifying thought to process. While both these paintings are successful at evoking fear of isolation, they are also equally successful at comforting those afflicted with these feelings. For fear is a human emotion, and therefore a part of human nature. It is through art that such emotions can not only be expressed by the artist, but also display empathy towards the viewer's own personal experiences. By doing this, reassures the viewer that they are not alone in their feelings.